Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day today. Look at this cute goldfinch. It's a bird. It's a photo that Hal Moran photographed on Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S dot com. Isn't that adorable? I'm really excited to paint it. So let's get started. <laughs> Let's set the table. I've got a six inch by six inch uh, wood cradled, it means it has this depth, paneled, panel. <laughs> uh, I, I mess up right away, that's why I'm laughing. From US Art Supply. Here's what that looks like. Um, I have a link in this video's description if that happens to interest you. I really like them. I put, oh, I need to grab it. I put two coats of clear gesso on it uh, last night. So I put a coat on, a thin coat, dried it with a hair dryer, and then put another coat on, and then it's been drying for 12 hours. The back says, um, let it dry for 24 hours. You can thin with 25% water um, and leave to dry for at least 24 hours. It's only been 12, but I've done this before and I've had good luck. Um, you guys can let me know in the comments if you've had any problems with that. So far, I have not. It is winter time. I'm in the Midwest of the United States and it's quite dry. I'm gonna use uh, the primary colors I use quite a bit. Quinacridone Magenta, uh, Thalo Blue, and I'm gonna put out in a bit some yellow so I can mix, well, I'm gonna need the yellows for the goldfinch. And I can mix some greens too. And I'm gonna try, and I don't know if it's gonna work, I'm gonna try painting a purple, purplish, purplish blue background instead of the green background, um, just because yellow and purple are compliments. And I think it'll look pretty with the bird and the flower. Okay, I'm gonna time lapse this bit and then I'll be back. Just a comment. So I was, I started painting it this way. Sorry guys, my voice is rough this morning. And then I realized my bird is going this way. So I changed it. Um, I mixed, ended up mixing purple three times. So you can see it's a little, maybe you can see in the video, it's a little redder here, a little bluer here. Um, it also may have changed just a little bit because I painted the sides. Put a couple coats on the sides. But I think, I don't know, I might turn it. That's not much darker, but I might actually, um, this is a little redder. I think I'm gonna paint it this way. So I'm gonna let this dry, go have some breakfast. Oh, you need to know, or you might wanna know. I used a Filbert from Royal and Langnickel. It's their mental line. <clears throat> so sorry guys, oh, that helped a little. Uh, I think it's a three quarter inch. Yeah, it's probably a three quarter inch. You can use absolutely any brush. Okay guys, I'm gonna go have breakfast, let this dry a little longer, and I'll be back. Just a couple of thoughts. Um, I'm using a number one round from Princeton. 
select. Um, I was going to try to use a bigger brush, but I couldn't quite get in there. I didn't paint every petal that you see in the flower. Just kind of hinted at a couple. And one way to, to do it is you just paint the whole petal in sort of a medium green color. And then you can outline it a little bit. Here, maybe if I point with something a little skinnier. Like it's a bright outline and it kind of fades. And that really gives it a petal shape. Isn't that fun? Um, painted the center a little bit more orange than in the reference photo. Here, maybe you want to see. Let's grab my iPad. And I've exaggerated the light on, on, on these little, they're not petals, I guess they're, um, they're the bud that opens up. So I mean, they're leaves. I've exaggerated them with a little bit more light, but I can come back and glaze them down or bring them back up in value. I rather like painting on a darker background because I think it's fun to sneak up on the values. And I think next I'm going to paint the flower. So why did I start with the stem and the, and the flower? <clears throat> Excuse me. Because the bird's sitting on it, the feet are on top of it. I did put in the beak and the eye. The eye isn't even close to done. I'm going to leave a little blue in the eye, uh, rim it with black, and then there's a black patch on the forehead. I don't, the beak could be done, I don't think it is. So I thought I'd just pop in with a couple of comments. I like painting with these primaries because I can mix, like I mix, mix a peachy pink for the legs, which I might tone down some more. I've kind of brought them up in color and then glazed them with some brown. I'm going to play with that. Here, maybe we'll paint a couple petals in real time. This is a quarter inch flat brush. It looks kind of dirty. I'm going to stick it in my water. I believe this is a Royal and Lang nickel. I, it's, <laughs> it's old and abused and dirty. Pretty sure that's a Royal and Lang nickel brush. I don't know what size other than a quarter inch. Um, <clears throat> excuse me guys. Sorry. I had a cold. Um, this is going to be transparent. Let's just see what it does. I'm going to keep the flower a little darker yellow than the bird. So if we grab... Oh, I don't know what I want to do here. Let's just try. I took my kneaded eraser and lightened up the petal. Oh, yeah, You see how when it's transparent, you see a lot of that purple coming through, but that's not necessarily bad. And then there's another, I might need a smaller brush. There's another petal. Let's paint that in. See, I don't mind. I can always add white. I can add another layer and it'll bring up the color. Oh, I'll be back in a sec. I'm going to sneeze. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys, um, this is unscripted. <laughs> oh, I sneezed three times. Maybe my cold isn't totally gone. I feel so much better. There's been a lot of stuff going around. I'm glad I lightened up the charcoal pencil because it's gonna show. And I'd rather paint these petals with a bigger brush. So maybe I can, now I've got that one in there. Maybe we can go back, just because it'll go quicker and it'll look better. You don't have to, you use whatever brush you like. All right, I'm gonna stick with this orange until I figure out where I want the light coming from. And they don't have to be exact. I did draw them out so that it follows the reference photo. I think sometimes you guys like that. You can let me know in the comments. I, mean, I almost need some green maybe there. I think I left out a little green. I'm kind of painting with the corner of my brush. I've got another reference photo. I'll have to paint it 
um, it's a goldfinch on a similar flower. It's it's a yellow. I think it's a yellow flower, but it's, a, it's not. It doesn't have a center like this. The center goes more up. I don't. If anybody knows what kind of flower that is, let me know in the comments. It kind of looks like a small sunflower or a mom, maybe. Maybe. I don't know how many different types of mums there are. But I like that. I like that it's soft and subtle. So a yellow and purple, well, orange, but yellow and purple are complements. So you will get kind of a muddy color. That's okay. We can put white on it. We can bring it up. Oh, I need to put out my Mr. Sun so I know where the light's coming from. What's kind of nice if I go over the green, since it's a transparent color, you really don't even see that I went over it. Also with the chalk pastel, um, tomorrow I can come in with a wet brush. Um, tomorrow isn't like a hard and fast rule. It depends on the weather and humidity in your studio, in your area. But I can wash it off if I don't cover it all up. I'm still not painting it's quite as loose as I had planned on. But this will help me see where I'm going. I should have just stuck with the little number one round the way I'm painting these. <laughs> I did those pretty well. Or more like I intended, I guess. It's not like they're bad. Okay, whoops. It's not totally dry. The paint stuck to my hand. <clears throat> so can you see how those are browner and these are a little bit more yellow? Hopefully you can. Um, that's just because it dries about a half shade darker. So now if I come back, do this again, oops, I stuck my hand in the yellow paint, here I need to wipe my hand off, excuse me. Now it's a little brighter. And if I come back, um, I think we come back with orange yet. I don't know what I want to do. So this is a lot more work. You could put some white in your paint, and it'll be it'll be much more opaque. And then you can come back and darken it. Acrylics are forgiving. You could do it either way. I think you get the idea, though. I'm just bringing up the values. We could. Oh, I forgot about Mr. Sun again. Um, and our reference photo is pretty much coming from the top. Here, I'll show you why I think that. So it's quite white right here. Um, darker under the belly. It actually might be coming a little bit from this direction. Of course, the top of the beak is lighter than the bottom. And it seems like this bird is almost shading everything but a little bit down here. And you don't have to be um, completely exact with the lighting, but it does help you. Like this is gray, and then this has white, white. So our sun, let's, I don't know, I kind of want to move it to the right, except for the top of the beak's getting light. Of course, there could be light bouncing around. Maybe we'll just say it's kind of from there. Um, there can be other light bouncing around that we don't we don't know about because we didn't take the photo. I went back to the little brush here. Here, let's um 
grab a little white and we could put oh I don't know how I want to do it maybe this one catches a little bit of light and it doesn't show it in the reference photo but let's say this one does a little bit it's kind of dry which is okay but I just want it to flow better so I grabbed a little water I don't want it too thin and just like those little leaves underneath we can rim some of them one I think it's in shadow but I think we'll get it <clears throat> excuse me so all I'm thinking now is I'm going to cover that chalk pastel line as long as I have a more opaque color in my hand. Let's make sure I covered it over here. So I painted that background several hours ago, but still wanting to stick to my hand a little bit. That's just more of an FYI. Oh, I'll be right back. So my cat, Freckles, stepped on my keyboard and started a podcast I was listening to. I think it's funny. I don't remember what I was doing exactly other than trying to cover up chalk pastel. She also was licking a graham cracker I had sitting. <laughs> I can hear her cleaning herself. Like I didn't really want to share. That was my snack. Okay. If I have too many highlights, we can come back and paint them out. I love that. Keep your paint, here's a tip. Keep your paint kind of thin. I mean, don't worry about it thin, but just don't put it on thick and globby because then it's easier to paint over. All right, let's put... Might be easier to use my number one right in there. Isn't that nice? And when you come back with the yellow, it really pops. Fun. Okay, I'm gonna work on the rest of these petals and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, what am I up to here? Because the black is so strong, I can paint 
the yellow of the bird over it. Um, I started with the black. I put in some of the shadow in the belly. I put in the highlights on the bird. And now I'm putting in the light areas and I'll come back with some black lines over it. Um, you could do it the other way around. You could put in the black and put the white over it because the, they're both really opaque colors. Oops, I'm just trying to get my iPad to... And then I'm making this a little bluer. That's in shadow. That's pretty much what I'm up to. When I paint the yellow, it's going to be transparent like these flowers. And these flower petals took a lot of layers. I'm almost tempted to paint, oh, I don't know. If I put white in it, I really want this to pop here. I think I will probably put some white in my yellow so it covers better and it goes quicker. But this is really pretty with all the layers and the yellow petals. You can do it either way. Oh, and then I don't know if I mentioned this, but I added some phthalo blue, put, put a little white in some phthalo blue and added, I think that's pretty. Put a little bit of phthalo blue in the green areas. A little blue on his toe in the shadow. Okay, just thought I'd pop in with what's going on. I'll be back in a bit. I want to point something out. I could be pretty much done here. So this is yellow um, straight out of the tube over the purple and over the brown I painted and the gray I painted and it made it a little green, but that actually follows the reference photo. Um, this paint is semi-transparent. Oh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. That box is half filled. So it's really nice what it's doing. Sometimes paintings go quicker because you get a really nice look with just one layer of paint over and uh, over like, sorry, I'm excited over the purple background. Um, I did add a little bit of white back in. I'm kind of playing with how much I want this gray that I painted to come through. Oh, I painted the eye. So the eye was light blue, and then I put some straight up purple in the eye and left that blue arc. And then now I put some black and left the purple over here to the left. I think that eye is done. We could play with it some more, but I like it. So I just wanted to pop in and say that we're pretty much done. I might take some, oh, I'm using a quarter inch flat brush from Royal and Langnickel. Might take some out of the tube yellow this bird has a highlight right here. I don't know if we want to kind of emphasize it. But what's nice is, so you can see what another layer, this is a second layer of yellow now, does. And it's what I mean by layers are your best friend. It can really help you. And if I don't like it, we can glaze it back with purple. So I'll start painting really slow and not make much progress as I kind of see what I think of what's happening. I think I like that because it makes the bird a little bit more round. And then since quinacridone and yellow are both semi-transparent, the box is half full on the, on the label, this will be transparent. And I can kind of push the value darker instead of lighter. It's still quite light. But just have it make a little more sense. And also be juicier in color. And this is dark. Do you see how this is drying darker and blending in? It's just one of those things where you kind of just have to see what happens 
which can be annoying. Um, it, can, it can even annoy me. I mean, it does, it's not like a new painter thing. But it's also fun to play with, just kind of see what it does and then adjust. But I'm liking the values we're getting, especially when I look through my phone. It's just juicy. Yeah, see, now that was so light and it's drying darker because it's transparent. So it's going to dry more than a half step darker. Um, I need to step back from it, see if I like... I might want to soften that up a little bit. I don't know, see if I like it. Okay guys, I'm gonna play with this some more and I'll probably be back pretty quick. Hey friends, oh my voice. I had a cold a week ago and I still get a little, um, sorry, a little gravelly. Um, hey friends, I'm done. Uh, compliments are your best friend. Layers are your best friends. Um, like my, my wings and my feathers are kind of messy, but I go from kind of a blue gray to a white. Here, I'll get that closer. And that helps you just shifting the color because our lights coming from over here. I did put in another little detail to help curve that wing, but my wings a little stiffer than in the, the actual bird, but it's, it's totally fine. I reinforced some of the white areas. Um, I don't know how many times I put some yellow there at least three times, maybe four. I kind of played with bringing out this toe a little more, uh, the back of this leg, the light on the back of the leg. It's just fun. It gets fun at the end, but also gets slow. Oh, and I put just a little bit of yellow on the top of the beak. His beak is not yellow at all, but I think it kind of warms it up and pulls it up, pulls it up to the top. Oh, here, maybe you wanna, well here, screenshot. I forget to do a screenshot. So I've been working on this painting a couple days, but it's fun. It's fun to play with it. I like, I really like, I don't know that you really think about it, but that's the purple coming through right over here. I really think that's pretty. Okay, so we got a screenshot. Now let's do like a little tour. I'm excited about this one. So painting is fun because it's relaxing. It's the only thing I'm thinking about. Um, but it's also fun, like I didn't know how much I was gonna like the purple underneath the yellow. So you, I learn a little something every time I paint. I don't always realize I'm learning. Um, and this one's just fun because the, the colors are just juicy. I exaggerated the blues in, is in the shadows. You could use straight up gray, but I think the blues are pretty. And also then it's they're used again, so that's nice. I like that the center of this, I don't know what kind of flower that it, that is. You guys will have to let me know in the comments. I like that that isn't terribly strong. It's just fun. And then I did bring the stem over to the bottom. Okay, well thanks bunches for hanging out with me. I couldn't do all this without all of you guys. I super appreciate your support. Great, big, happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye guys.